What's going on guys? Garrett here with the RAS Group. Back to another video. Today we're talking about the importance of a weapon light on your handgun. I know a lot of people feel very strongly about this on either end of the spectrum. I'm going to tell you my stance right now. I believe in always having a weapon light on a handgun or really any defensive minded firearm at that rate. Let's dive into it. Let's talk about it a little bit. My reasons why, my logic, we'll go from there. So to start off, the reason that I feel so strongly about a weapon light. This is my old duty gun, okay? This is what I had working in law enforcement for my first, I think like four or so years, or actually more like five years. 6RP220 single stack 45 ACP, a nice gun. I believe not an adequate duty gun. This exact light right here is my first ever weapon light that I purchased for any reason. And I purchased it because I got full time at my agency. One week later, I had my first ever nighttime range qualification. I failed that qualification. I had to shoot it a total of three times, which means I had to reshoot twice. And I was pissed. I was upset. I was traditionally not a horrible shot. This was before I really embarked on my journey of becoming a uh, any level of proficient. And I went to somebody that I highly, highly respect in the department, and they brought up the idea of putting a weapon light on my gun. I was very open to it, anything to help me improve at that point. I bought this exact TLR1, not even a TLR1 HL, a TLR1, for 70 bucks. I ordered the compatible holster for it off of eBay for about... I want to say 100 to 110 dollars and i started using it and i instantly noticed an improvement especially come the next range qualification i saw immediate improvement i had no trouble no problems and i've never shot below a 95 percent ever since that day that to me proved that the whole handheld weapon light mentality the iu poles or the fbi holds that it's otherwise known as is a lesser form of handgun illumination than just having a weapon mounted light. That being said, there's a lot of reasons and kind of objective facts that I look at as why this is. First off, it, with a we with a weapon mounted light, I can maintain two hands on my on my firearm, right? I have my dominant hand, I have my support hand. I can batteries are dead, but I, as you can see, I can toggle my light while maintaining my grip. Okay, I can do that with a Glock 17, right? I can do that with an X300. Pretty simple. With an FBI or AU pulled, that's giving me essentially a point of contact where I'm getting like this, this wrist lock, right? I'm not really getting any stability here because my hands can still move. They can still do things. So, to me, that's the biggest one. I can maintain maximum points of contact on the handgun. You know, we only get two with a handgun. We get four with a rifle. I want to maximize those two as much as I can. Next up, we're talking about the idea of the light actually being some sort of a point of reference for you in a low light situation as far as aiming. As you notice, all of these weapon lights that you see, every single one is about a 12 o'clock below the bore. Or maybe I should say 6 o'clock to the bore. That's probably a little bit more accurate. Directly beneath. How about that? When you are in relatively close proximity, I would say within 7 yards for sure, maybe even up to 10 yards, be, uh, depending on the concentration of the light beam that you're using, you that's going to give you some sort of approximate aiming reference to a man-sized target. Is it going to be precise? Absolutely not. Is it going to be better than nothing in a shitty situation in the dark? Absolutely. We've tested this. We practiced it. It does work. It's not some, you know, off the wall, reinventing the wheel type me uh, methodology here. It just works. Um, so there is that. If you guys haven't been to a low light class and you've gotten the chance to actually shoot your gun at nighttime, I highly encourage you to do so. I think it will reinforce the idea of weapon light to you. Next, but surely not least, one of my, uh, kind of one of my buddies, um, I don't really know him too well, so I don't. I feel kind of weird saying buddy, but a dude I've met several times through Bull Creek Strategic, highly reputable training company up in Lockport, New York. They operate out of Escarpment Arms. Check them out. Awesome group of dudes. I can't recommend them enough, but Travis brought up this idea of a weapon light in a combative situation, 
providing some sort of standoff, right? As long as the light bezel is extending past your muzzle. That's also a very good point. Um, things happen in combatives, things that you didn't intend to happen. You might be going against somebody that's relatively, you know, also trained. If, you're, if your muscle ends up getting pressed into them in any type of way, form, or fashion, your gun goes out of battery, that's a pretty pretty bad day. The light can prevent that. Overall, guys, I would always encourage you to get a weapon light every single time. I, I think that it is superior to using a handheld light in conjunction with a firearm. That being said, I still advocate for carrying an independent light source of some sort just for oddball tasks or maintenance or whatever. Um... Anything that you're not, you know, relying your life upon. So that being said, you guys can pick up really a, a weapon light for anything. Even a Glock 26 with a TLR-6. Streamlight TLR-1 uh, HLs, X300s. I got all, I get all my lights from Brownells. Um, they've had pretty much every light I've ever looked for, with the exception of one or two or three that were out of stock. Um, I think at that rate, I just checked the used market, bought them from some buddies. Overall, guys, that's my spiel. Um, something very important to me, something that I think should be pushed more in the culture, more in the industry. I always see the reputable instructors doing it. Uh, I find it hard to believe that so many guys with vetted end user driven backgrounds are not are all wrong. So that should say something right there. Don't let my opinion be the only one you listen to. Obviously, keep an open mind, listen to everybody, but this is where I'm at. That's where I kind of stake my flag. If you guys have any questions, hit me up on Instagram at underscore RAS group or hit us up on the website, rasgrouptraining.com. We do have a current class posting for March 25th if you're interested. Other than that, you guys stay safe, stay trained, stay rad, and I'll be back with the next one.